Hello and welcome to Mando Bug Crafts, my channel here on YouTube where I share a bunch of the crafty things that I do. In this video, I'm going to be sharing my very first spin for the year of the mini skein. Now this is a spin along that's being hosted by Jade of the So Perfect Pro podcast. I will link everything down below. I decided that I'm going to film each of my challenge spins. So for the very first challenge, I decided to learn how to spin from the fold. And upon further research, I found out there's two ways to do that. So for this first spin, I decided to do from the fold off the tip. Now I had a two ounce bat and I thought, well, it's the mini skeins are only supposed to be at least one ounce so I have two ounces I should run a little bit of an experiment so I spun one the off the tip from the fold off the tip woolen prep woolen spin sorry the bats of woolen prep I'm doing the woolen spin but I decided to do the other two ounces as a worsted spin so I could compare and contrast just how much more woolen does a woolen spin put on a woolen prep versus a worsted spin on a woolen prep. So I thought I would record the whole thing and take you guys along the journey with me. So I will show you how I prep the bat. So this is my two ounce bat from Edgewood Garden Studio. It's a merino bat that may have other breeds blended in with it, but it doesn't specify. So I just kind of folded it out and opened it up. I couldn't tell where the opening was at first because it's folded so nicely but it's kind of just folded in on itself. It's a very, very thin, basically, sheet of fiber that's all kind of carted into one nice big bat. Once I got it all laid out, I did my best to kind of find the center, made a little hole, just enough to get my hand in, and then I just ripped it apart. And then I just kind of repeated that same process, relaying out the sheet of the bat, finding the middle, doing my best to split it evenly and just strip it right down the middle. And I kept stripping the bat pieces down thinner and thinner until I found what might be best for over the fold technique. You can see I put it over my finger there to check if I liked the width of the strip and I did. So I wound it into a little nest of fiber. Once I finished winding all of my little strips into nests, then it was time to weigh them and separate them out. Because it's a two ounce bat, I did my best to weigh the fiber into two one ounce pieces or sections. So the first ounce I decided to spin over the fold off the tip. This is that new technique that I'm talking about and so I just kind of took off a strip of fiber folded it over my finger and I'm holding on to those bottom pieces there in my hand and I got my wheel going got some twists built up on my leader and I just kind of put the leader under the tip of my finger and drafted a bit of that fiber off the top of my finger allowed that twist to build up on there and then I was going now I've never done this before so you can see I was struggling in the beginning to I'm kind of doing a short forward there I don't know if you can see that at all uh, just because I'm it's what I'm used to doing but there I go I got the twist up in the fiber I'm doing more of an assisted um, woolen draw and so this is a really really fun technique you can see as the fibers come off the tip of my finger it kind of creates this air pocket vortex at the tip of my finger so there's all this air that's getting into my single and it's really cool feeling to feel the fiber spiraling off the tip of your finger I did find when I got to the end of a strip of fiber I struggled a little bit to keep it woolen because it's not around my finger anymore so I just tried to make sure the twist stayed in my fiber and I did a little bit of a short backward draw on it Spinning like this reminds me of spinning from a Rolag. I don't know if you guys have spun from a Rolag before, but because it's wound up in a circle, um, you kind of get a vortex spiral going. But I actually found this technique easier to do than spinning from a Rolag because 
you have a better hold on your fiber. Sometimes roll lags tend to kind of fall apart. Whereas with this fiber, it's you're holding on to it. You've got to hold on it. It can't fall and collapse in the middle because your finger's there. So um, it did take a little bit to get used to, but I highly recommend this technique if you haven't tried it. The only thing that is a bit fiddly is that you can only work with a small amount of fiber at a time. You kind of chunk up a couple different staple lengths and fold them over your finger. So if you wanted to hold more fiber at once, you can do that, but you do change out a lot. So here is my bobbin of wool and spun singles. So I decided to spin my other ounce short forward. Now you can already tell from this video that I am much more comfortable with a short forward draw. It's what I primarily spin like. So I can already see in this video that the short forward is making a much, much thinner yarn than the woolen from the fold off the tip has. And that's because you can see those fibers they're sandwiching together, they're smushing and condensing together. There's not any air in between those fibers being drafted out. Well, there is because of the woolen prep of the bat. There is more air than had it been a comb top, but there's not nearly as much air as when I spun off the fold from the tip. When I spin short forward, you can kind of see the fiber in my right hand there. I kind of twist it to grab the pieces that I want to come up next. So you can kind of see that light blue fluff hanging out to the side. Um, I just kind of twist my hand so that that fiber will eventually get pulled up by my other finger and see there it is, I got it. So I do a lot of twisting back and forth with my right hand. I didn't get a shot of my finished short forward singles, but I do have this shot of me chain plying. The, I chain plied both the worsted and the woolen singles. And when I chain ply, I like to make the biggest loops possible. I like to minimize the number of times you're kind of folding over on yourself. And because sometimes based on your consistency, you can kind of get little bumps where the chain closes and a new one opens. So I try to make my chains as big as possible, which means my right arm is making quite the large movement. Um, it's hard to keep all in frame here. But what I do to kind of make that chain even bigger as I work is you can see my right hand, I just kind of twist it back and forth and that will pull the chain and make it even bigger. And I kind of eyeball what I think looks good, what feels good and adjust accordingly. All right, now here are my finished mini skeins. Now, I have to be straight up front in the fact that my woolen spin, my from the fold off the tip, did not turn out the same way as my worsted, you guys. I am a little surprised. They're close, but the, wor the worsted spin, that is the one down here at the bottom, and the woolen is the one at the top. Now, not only is the skein on the bottom a more true to fingering weight while the woolen spin on the top is more of a DK weight or not DK sorry sport weight um, it's also less consistent can you see that at all I switched I switched them around on you guys tricky tricky uh, from the fold woolen short forward worsted so the bottom is it is a sport weight, it is heavier, but it's also less consistent. Um, at first glance, you don't see much of a difference other than the inconsistency and the weight. But, I'll see if I can put some photos in here. Um, let's talk about the, the feel. The feel. So, the, the worsted spin on the woolen prep is feels smoother because it is more consistent. And there's less air in there, so it's a lot more compact and... Uh, dense so it's got a smoother feel but it's got a it feels smooth but more rough does that make sense the woolen prep does not feel smooth but it feels just a tad softer um, it's, it's interesting I don't feel that it got all that more woolen I feel like Based on this experiment, it seems that the woolen prep made a bigger impact on just how woolen the yarn is, but there is definitely a difference between these two yarns. Um, not as 
large of a contrast as I expected to see, but there is a difference, and I have a feeling when this is knit up, there's going to be a bigger difference in the fabric that the yarn creates. So, um, I wish they were the same weight so that I could knit a woolen, a woolen woolen sock and the, uh, combo sock, but they're not the same weight, so I'm not going to make socks with them anymore. But I had a lot of fun spinning from the fold off the tip and running a little bit of an experiment. It's kind of inspired me to keep the experiments going as I continue on this year of the mini skein challenge spin along. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment. That helps others find my video. It puts me up when people search for videos like this one. Um, it moves my video closer to the top of the search. So um, I would very much appreciate that. Um, and yeah, uh, let me know if you guys have any suggestions for what I should add to my list of challenges for the year. I have different wheel setups that I want to try out, different breeds I want to try, and different types of yarn that I want to try. So um, yeah, leave me a comment below if there's something you want to see me try, um, if, I, if it's new. It has to be new to me, so, um, but I know you guys can come up with something good. Alright, until next time guys, happy crafting! Bye!